Good morning. So I thought I would do a follow-up video on Colette's trip to Washington, D.C. because I think that there needs to be a big emphasis on this. And I also think there's a lot of parents out there that are not informed as they should be. And it took me years and years and years to uncover things that were available or things that were happening or things that were injustices on my own. And why didn't I know about these things? Because it's just not out in the media. So that's why I've decided to do this video. So um, so we had our visit to, in Washington and Colette spoke. And I know they just interviewed her on Fox and Friends, but I just want to reiterate that Colette spoke about the sub-minimum wage and what a lot of people don't even know, which is amazing to me, is that there is still a law out um, that allows employers to pay a person with a disability whatever they think that person is worth. So if you can believe it or not, there are people with disabilities working across the country that are making $2.50 an hour because their employer is cashing in to that law and that opportunity for them to save money. So first of all, just the fact that that law still exists and, and is so discriminating to people with disabilities and in the, in, in the sensitive climate that we live in, I still can't wrap my head around the fact that that law still exists and that this is such a discrimination for people with disabilities. Not to mention how people with disabilities feel because of this law. Talk about ma making someone feel like their self-worth is so much less than other people. I mean, how do you expect people with disabilities to grow in life if all we're doing is putting the ceiling over them and, and squashing them down by saying, you know what, you're never going to be worth what everybody else is worth, so we're paying you $2.50 an hour. And you know what, on that note, I do have something to say. Colette has 15 employees. She hires people with disabilities, whether it's, uh, and challenges, whether it's a neurodiverse um, disability or it's a physical disability. She also hires people that were homeless that are now living in apartments. She also hires people that um, are are vet veterinary uh, veterans. Um, she has an amazing group of people, and I can tell you that the people that she hires, she does not start for less than minimum wage. Which, by the way, that's what the sub minimum wage right law, which we don't have in Massachusetts anymore. Massachusetts is very progressive with really lifting people with disabilities, as you can see how they've lifted Colette. So that law is on the table in Congress. State by state, certain states have decided to get rid of the law, but it's still a federal law in Washington. So that law needs to be abolished. That law shouldn't even be existing anymore. So that was one of the issues that Colette went down and said, this is who I am. This is what I've accomplished. I hire people with disabilities. My employees are amazing. My employees are dedicated. My employees are loyal. They're always on time. They're grateful every day and they work together as a team. They don't come in. They're not selfish. They're not self-absorbed. They come in, they notice if somebody's having a down day and they jump in and help that person. It is the most incredible atmosphere. And Colette has people that uh, keep people and groups and companies that come there to volunteer. And I can tell you, it's one of the best things that they've experienced in a long time because of that feeling and that camaraderiness and that care and that gratefulness. The, the atmosphere is amazing. Why would somebody pay these people less money? The value that they bring, the environment that they create is amazing. So that's one. Obviously, I have a lot to say on that. The other issue she talked about that a lot of parents, parents listen up that have children with disabilities and a lot of young adults, a lot of adults with disabilities don't know this. There is a law, there is a, a, a law that was passed called the ABLE Act, okay? The ABLE Act is a, um, it's a bank account that you can set up that is called an ABLE account and it allows you as a person with disabilities to save money and not lose money because you have money in the bank, not lose your benefits, okay? And every state has a different uh, cap. 
what Massachusetts might have, you can save, I think it's $15,000 a year up to a certain cap. Some states it's 24, 25,000. Some states you can save up to a half a million dollars and not lose your benefits. And that money is, it goes into the ABLE account and you're allowed to use it through your lifetime, the person that owns the account with disabilities for certain things. Obviously for living expenses, uh, maybe you need a car, uh, maybe you need help with rent, with food, or maybe you wanna start a business. So that's how Colette got started. Colette was one of the first people when Massachusetts, sorry guys, when Massachusetts um, took on the ABLE Act and brought on the ABLE accounts, Colette was one of the first people to have an account. I think that was in 2000, I don't even remember. It was a long time ago. That enabled her to, to, to save money so she could, and not lose her benefits. Now here's the thing, right? So this is what, if you're in the work, if you're already working and you have, and you have a disability, then you already understand this. If you're not, if you're a mom or a dad or a caregiver or a teacher, then maybe you, and, and you're not in the working um, population yet, or your students aren't, or your child isn't, then you don't know this yet. When you receive resource, money, stamp, food stamps, whatever it is, health insurance from the state, because you have a disability, the moment you get a job and you start making money, if you have over $2,000 in your account, they start pulling the assistance they're giving you. So you lose money from them. You could lose health insurance. So there's this very imbalanced state that exists that Colette, when she hires employee, employees, they want to work more. They want to get out of their house. They, wanna, they love that feeling of value. They want to be out there working, but they are scared to work past a certain amount because then they're going to lose their, their benefits and then they're not going to be able to exist at all. So they get capped at working only a certain amount of hours a week because they're afraid of this. Because most everyone doesn't know that if you open up this ABLE account, you can work as much as you want and that money's going to go into the account and the state cannot take any benefits from you. They can't consider that the money that you have more than $2,000. They can't do anything. So the ABLE account needs to be shouted from rooftops because if you can't even believe that people with disabilities were not allowed to be in 401s, were not allowed to have retirement. Until recently, they weren't even allowed to get an organ. God forbid they need an organ an organ, and they need transplant. Downs, people with Down syndrome weren't even allowed to be on that list, right? There's just so many things that still exist that we need to start flushing out. We've come a long way. We've got a long way to go. So the lesson for today is... Shout about the subminimum wage. Let's finally thank God for Congress people like Congresswoman Kathy McMorris Rogers. Um, she's fighting this. She, before she retires, she wants this out of Washington, this policy. And of course, she's living it personally because she has a son that was born Down syndrome and she doesn't want to see her son faced with this. And it's discrimination. ABLE account, ask about ABLE accounts. Google it in your state. Um, I know in our state, we um, in a lot of states, you work with Fidelity. Fidelity really manages ABLE accounts. But get an ABLE account set up. If you want to funnel money in there for your child, for if you're a person with disabilities and you want to be able to save money, you want to save up for something, you want to save up to, um, to get a better apartment or you need a car or, um, or you want to start a business, right? That's how Colette started. So that's the lesson for today. That's what Colette spoke about on Capitol Hill. That's what we're driving. We're super excited to be a part of this. Colette's story is amazing, but she's just proof that people with disabilities, people with a label that has the word disability on it, have tremendous amount of abilities and we need to look at them differently. But we need to also create an equal world for them. They, 
the hot buttons have yet to be them. Let's just say that, right? We went through the hot buttons on Black Lives Matter. We went through the hot buttons on LBGT. And now it needs to be these people because you know what? They're working super hard to be included, to be blended. They're coming further than they've ever come before. And they're going to post-secondary. They're working their butts off. And then the, guess what happens? When they finish their education, they're back home sitting on the couch at mom and dad's because where are the employment opportunities? They can't live on their own because of the sub-minimum wage or because they don't know about the able account so they can only make a certain amount of money. So listen, we're gonna get there, but we need education. We need people to know more. And that's why I did this video. So God bless you. Let's keep moving forward and God bless America.